So my work is how to extract the structured information from unstructured node data. So it's like basically all the clinical node. But here the main problem is now it's like all this neural embedding technique is very popular to extract the information from like free text. But the main problem with medical data is the medical data, they use a lot of acronyms, synonyms, like then they use a lot of abbreviation, which is not really fed into a neural network to figure it out. So what we did, we just use a kind of like a extension of the neural embedding. So we develop a small module called Ontro Crawler, which uh, given some kind of like key uh, terms of a domain, it can crawl the NCBO bio portal and create a domain specific dictionary for you. And then by using that particular dictionary, we can actually do a kind of like semantic dictionary mapping. After the semantic dictionary mapping, we can run any kind of neural embedding technique, starting from LSTM to what to vector to glove, glove to vector, something like that. And then we can analyze this context our like embedding kind of thing, just analyzing the context of that key term to create a kind of document vector. And then once this vector representation is created, we can run any kind of supervised learning, starting from digital phenotyping, risk analysis, then extraction of annotation, anything. And then finally we can get like annotated data. So, so this framework has been tested on radiology report, oncology nodes, nursing nodes, hospital nodes. And the case study I will be talking in the, my poster session is starting from prognosis analysis where we have like 10,000 patients and over 1,000 time points for each patient. Then we can predict the so survival, like it's a short term survival, but accuracy is very high, which is 8.9. Then we also run, run the framework on the radiology report annotation, and which is also very high. And then we also use it from the mammography reports and got very high accuracy scores. So hope to see you in the poster. Thank you. Next up, we have Cody Coleman, who is going to be talking to us about Don Bench, an end-to-end -end deep learning benchmark and competition. Donbench is an end-to-end -end deep learning uh, benchmark and competition that aims to demystify the trade-offs in deep learning. Rather than focusing on accuracy or throughput, we instead focus on training time and training costs to get to a specific uh, accuracy threshold close to the state of the art. And we look at inference time and inference cost uh, while maintaining that level of accuracy. And by focusing on this, we can evaluate different combinations of optimizations and be able to have a single standard way of evaluating uh, deep learning systems uh, across optimizer, algorithm, models, and uh, hardware. And if you would like to learn more about our results, what we found by combining different optimizations and different methods for deep learning into a single model, stop by my poster. Thank you. So I believe Animesh is not here, but that Julian Gao will be presenting on um, neural task programming, learning to generalize across hierarchical tasks. Yes? No? Maybe not. Um, if you're interested in that work, then you should definitely swing by their poster. Um, let's see. So this is their slide. Um, is it this one? Yeah. So next up, we have Leigh Guan, who's going to be talking to us about a direct approach for predicting platelet use at Stanford Hospital. So uh, in this pro in this project, the problem we are trying to solve is try to reduce the platelet waste in the Stanford um, blood center while trying to avoid the probability of uh, running into shortage. So the reason why we target at this. Um, blood product is that this product is frequently used in the hospital and it will uh, expire very fast after you collect it. It can only remain for three days if not being used. And currently there is a huge waste in hospital. And um, in this project, we uh, developed a model trying to target at minimizing the waste directly instead of first uh, going through an intermediate step of predicting the um, uh, how much you are going to use each day in the hospital. And the result is quite amazing. Um, if you look at the result, um, originally um, the blue line is what they currently have in the hospital. They wasted uh, around 1,500 per year. And 
And the red line is what will have achieved reduced the waste to um, less than one third compared with the original result. If you're interested in how we, um, we model this problem and what are the tricky parts we need to deal with in the project, you're welcome to stop by my poster. Thank you. Next, we have David Halleck, who's going to be talking about topless inverse covariance-based clustering of multivariate time series data. Cool. So uh, our method is called topless inverse covariance-based clustering, or TIC. And many different applications from cars to financial markets have large amounts of multivariate unlabeled time series data. And what we've developed is a novel method of understanding and labeling in an automatic way the, the data. So for example, if you have Fitbit data from a, a fitness tracker, you can label it in an unsupervised way into walking, sitting, running, and a sequence of these states without having to predefine exactly what these actions refer to. Or for example, with automobiles, you can discover left turns, right turns, all without manually defining what these different actions look like. And the way we do this is by clustering the time series based on the correlation structure between the centers both within time and across different times. And we've applied this to a bunch of different applications. Uh, if you think it can apply to yours, uh, feel free to stop by the poster. Thanks so much. Next we have Will Hamilton, who will be talking about inductive representation learning on large graphs. Uh, so in recent years, uh, deep learning architectures for learning over graph structured data uh, have led to state-of-the-art results on a number of tasks. So ranging from things like trying to predict uh, novel uses for existing drugs or trying to recommend products or movies to people on websites like Amazon or Netflix. However, existing approaches uh, for trying to apply deep learning architectures to graph structured data have some serious limitations. In particular, uh, these methods generally can't scale to graphs that have, say, even millions, or some graphs have billions of nodes, and they also have a problem that they're not able to generate representations or predictions for nodes that they've never seen before, say, in an evolving graph in somewhere like Amazon or Pinterest. So in our work, uh, we developed a highly scalable uh, framework, which we call Stochastic Graph Convolutional Networks, that is able to generate representations and make predictions on graphs that have billions of nodes. Uh, and even able to generate predictions on nodes or parts of the graph that is never actually seen at train time. Uh, so come by our poster to find out more. Thanks. Next we have Neil Jean, who's uh, going to talk to us about enabling rapid screening of bacterial blood infections with machine learning. Hi. Um, so bacterial infections, you might not hear very much about them, but they actually kill more people in the United States than breast cancer and HIV combined. Um, and in the developing world, they cause up to 30% of all deaths. Um, so the current process is right now, if you go to the doctor and you have a bacterial infection, they'll draw blood and send it off to a lab to be cultured for days to weeks. Um, but in the meantime, they need to treat you because it's very dangerous. So they give you a broad spectrum antibiotic. And this leads to the development of resistant strains of um, bacteria. So what we're trying to do is we're working together with the material science group to build a system that can do point of care diagnosis for 27 of the most common strains of bacterial infections. So please stop by my poster and I can tell you more. Um, let's see where we are. Daniel Kang will be speaking to us about no scope querying videos a thousand times faster with deeper learning, deep learning. Today I'll be presenting about NoScope, which is a system that we designed to do uh, neural network queries over video at scale. One of the largest problems we have today with doing this analysis over large-scale uh, large video data is that um, oftentimes the, we are, we, we're in a computational bottleneck. And uh, in our work, we present uh, three key techniques to reduce this uh, computational <laughs> bottleneck. The first is a difference detector. Uh, the second are specialized models. And finally, the third is a, a method for searching for model cascades to uh, do this pipeline end-to-end. -end. And if you're interested, please stop by the poster. So Volodymyr couldn't make it today. Um, I think he's under the weather. So, but someone will be at his poster. And it's um, time series super resolution using 
yeah, sorry, time series super resolution using deep neural networks. Um, so definitely stop by if that's something that's interesting to you. Next up we have uh, Hima Lakaraju, who's gonna be talking to us about um, using machine learning for high stakes decision making. No? No, okay. So I'll let you guys read the slide. This the right one? Okay. Next, we have uh, Deepak Narayanan, who's going to talk to us about Kostos, a cost based optimizer for data science workloads. Optimizing deep uh, data science workloads is challenging for two main reasons. One, the optimization, optimization decisions that you often need to make are highly data dependent. And two, statistics about the data are not known a priori. Um, to solve this problem, we designed and built Costos, a cost-based optimizer for data science workloads. Costos has two main components, a cost model that allows us uh, to determine how effective different optimizations are without running any uh, application code, um, and an adaptive uh, uh, statistics, statistics collector that determines which statistics to collect at runtime by reasoning about their cost and benefit. Uh, Costos produces speed ups of up to 150x on various data science workloads. Thanks. Is this the right slide? All right. Next, we have Shumik Palkar, who will be talking to us about accelerating data analytics end to end from parsing to compute. Uh, yeah, hi. My name is Shomik. Um, I work with Matei Zaharia. Um, so I work on a project called Weld, which is a new framework for building data science and data analytics applications. Um, so kind of the key idea in the project is that um, you have all these data science workloads ranging from SQL to machine learning to graph algorithms. Um, but when you build real pipelines, you're actually combining many of these um, libraries. Um, and it turns out that even if each of these libraries is really optimized, when you combine them to build a big pipeline, um, you don't get you know, hardware level performance. So um, Wells is kind of this framework that you can use to build new um, uh, libraries um, and you kind of get better performance from that. So as you can see here, you get like multiple orders of magnitude better performance than existing frameworks. Um, we're also exploring bottlenecks in other areas like loading data. Um, so for example, in Spark Query, sometimes most of your time just goes into loading and filtering data. Um, but it turns out that if you do some um, smart optimizations here, you can get you know, another order of magnitude speed up. Um, so come by our poster if you're interested. Thanks. Next, we have Alex Ratner, who's going to talk about snorkel, rapid training set creation with weak supervision. That is a, <laughs> a lot more content than my uh, original lightning talk slide. I think this is actually the poster preview. So more for me to talk about, uh, but that's great. Uh, so I'm a fourth year PhD student. I work with Chris Ray, and uh, in particular, uh, working on the system called Snorkel. Um, and so the, the key motivation, this is the upper left panel there, um, behind Snorkel is that uh, traditionally, maybe a couple years ago, if you asked an ML engineer what they were doing with their time, it would be probably writing features. And today, it's you know they're tearing their hair out over how they can get training data, specifically labeled training data for the you know, traditional uh, supervised learning pipeline. Um, and this is because we're now working in this you know, deep learning era where we can learn very robust and good representations automatically, uh, at least empirically, uh, but we need commensurately massive amounts of <clears throat> training data. So the idea of a snorkel is uh, a simple one. We have experts provide their input at a higher level. They write things called labeling functions. These are little snippets of Python code uh, that allow them to easily express their domain expertise or other resources. And then we use this as a sort of noisier source of supervision, which we denoise and then use to train uh, a wide variety of models. Um, and for those of you, especially who were here last year and also might have uh, seen Snorkel, uh, we have lots of cool empirical and theoretical uh, work we've been doing in the meantime, so I'd love to talk to you more about it at the poster. Thanks. So I don't think Anna is here, um, but I, I don't know if, Marjorie, do you know she has a poster still? Not sure. So um, Anna is actually you and Ashley and Anshul Kundaji's student, and so she was going to present on population level analysis of physical activity patterns and impact on health, determining the roles of genes and environment. So next up, we have Paroma Varma, who's going to talk to us about enabling efficient image and video training set generation. Hi, 
in Paroma, and it's good that this slide came right after a snorkel because essentially what we're doing is taking the snorkel paradigm and making it more applicable to unstructured data like video and images. We also have some interesting work where we include um, program logic of what the users write and encode it into our statistical model. So there's a really cool combination of static analysis and statistical analysis in our work. So if you want to learn more, come by the poster. And finally, we have Somali Data and Amir Bahmani, who will be talking about Genomic Data Commons AI-assisted genomic data interpretation engine. Hey all. Uh, our application is a part of the Stanford Data Commons framework. So if you're interested in that, please Google uh, Stanford Data Commons and you will find this uh, video uh, uh, from last year. Uh, Chameleon is a uh, cloud-based context of their framework that helps scientists to access to the most recent discoveries in their fields. So suppose you're a cancer researcher and you have thousands of uh, uh, genomes, like VCF files, you, uh, with the help of Chameleon, you upload it to the cloud and uh, annotation hive using technologies like uh, Google BigQuery and Google Dataflow, it will run it against multiple annotation sets uh, in parallel and uh, return back the annotated VCF file to you. Other than that, we have a, a recommender system, uh, SciReader, that uh, sorts uh, paper publications uh, based on different topics and uh, finds the top most related to papers publications based on your request. And if there is any uh, annotation uh, associated to this pa publication, then it will load it into annotation file, annotation engine, and uh, we also uh, send you the annotated uh, VCF file based on those publications. So basically, Chameleon is helping you to find the most, uh, the best existing uh, uh, solution for your application. Thank you so much. <laughs>